Look, why prolong this? I could keep this up all day, but you... Why not fly on out of here while you still can? Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and I want to talk about some information I came into, but I want to have this be known right away. Take everything I say with a grain of salt. I have literally one source, and they've never been wrong before. I will say that. Everything I've reported from them, I think only two or three times on this channel, has never been wrong. But... This is a little bit of a different situation. So again, take it with a grain of salt. Now, I think everybody at this channel really knows what's going on with the whole Snyder cut with Ray Fisher, with Jeff Johns. You know my bias and you know which side I stand on. That I've never, ever hit it. So with everything that's happened, and I'm not going to go over it. I have in, <laughs> in quite the detail. But what I want to talk about is also what information I have become privy to. Now, most articles didn't even mention the fact that uh, uh, Nisa Dorsey, who is Jeff John's ex-wife from Louisiana, who is black, came out and defended him. She said he's been part of a black family since the year 2000. Most articles didn't mention this. And, or the fact that his current wife is Asian and his children are mixed. These things are all left out specifically for a narrative, right? So let's get down to what I've been learning. Now, I came across this information yesterday and I have made fun of Giant Freaking Robot or Overlord DVD. There have been people I've been saying, these are ridiculous rumors, don't believe them. So what I'm gonna tell you is, these are ridiculous rumors, don't believe me. But then again, like I said before, my source has never been wrong. So take it with a grain of salt. Now, this is very much a rumor as far as this entire video, but two years, I've been getting small tidbits of information and releasing them to you. And again, they've never been wrong. So this video is not for the Snyder cult. <laughs> this is for normal people because we already know that the Snyder bronies, I'll say bronies instead of cult, will justify murder in the name of Zack Snyder, right? So here goes. This goes all the way back to the Man of Steel. This is where Warner Brothers divided in half, kind of. The Jeff John camp and the Zack Snyder camp. Essentially, most look at it this way. The reason the DCEU failed, the reason the DCEU cannot compete with Marvel, falls on Zack Snyder's back. The failure of that universe as looked at by Warner Brothers executives as the fault of Zack Snyder. Now, that's the Johns camp, right? So the man, they looked at it as the man ruined character after character, made it too dark. Not just for me, for everyone. Superman, every single day of the week, every single movie he makes should make a billion dollars. But word of mouth told everybody who hadn't seen it on the first day how dark Superman was. Normies tuned out. They didn't want to see that. They didn't want to see how dark. They didn't want to see Injustice Superman. They could just play it, right? They wanted to see real heroes, not murderers. They wanted good storytelling, not Zack Snyder's. They wanted all of that, so they went to Marvel. DC fans went to Marvel, and the executives blame Snyder. But here is what people don't know. Most people don't know. The budding of heads is where it all stems from. Now, I'm told a long time ago, way back in 2013, there was a Man of Steel pre prequel comic, right? Something I actually didn't know existed till yesterday, nor did I read. So I don't have an opinion on the comic. But this was the moment that they really knew that they disagreed on how the characters were to be become portrayed moving forward. That's where they started butting heads that long ago. And then add that Jeff Johns became Zach's boss for a while. He didn't like it. And a plan starts or at least an idea of having a plan was born. Right. And um, then, you know, to add insult to injury, they bring in Joss Whedon. 
And that killed everything that Zack Snyder wanted. And the Snyder bronies were born. And, and Zack's ego at that point was pretty much killed. Now, I don't agree with what happened in that situation. I'm just telling you the ramifications of the situation. Now, knowing all of this, huh, the thing about where the accusations went and who they came from, and then they let the manipulations begin. If you were promised your own movie, promised a huge role, all you have to do is figure out a way to get rid of those who oppose Zack Snyder within the company. So Zack Snyder wanted to reclaim control of the DC universe and Zack Snyder to reach out. There's actually three people specifically, one more recently, but the first up is Ray Fisher. But how, right? Well, Ray Fisher went on a mission to bring people down. And by Zack regaining control, he was set. He would have worked for years and been a massive star. Right now, if you get a superhero like Cyborg, you're set. You're set. They didn't know how to go about it. And then Black Lives Matter, as he willingly admits, was what inspired him. So if you went the racism route, how can anyone refute that to a black man? Justifiable in his eye, right? So uh, it wasn't just him, though, that he promised. Pay attention to dates. They always have this seemingly pattern. And this pattern, especially in the last one, shows how it was planned. Jeff Johns released recently released a creator-owned comic for the first time, Geiger. And I and I reviewed it. But the day before, we had a man by the name of Reggie Jean Page come out for the first time in years. In years, saying that he was not cast because of racism. Which any rational person with an IQ above freezing would know that it's not racist to typecast. And typecasting has always been a thing. It always will be a thing and always, it will. I'm sorry, it's not racist to typecast. It's bullshit that you even call it that. It is a normal practice. But why? Why did he suddenly come out, especially right before a huge day in Jeff John's life? What changed? Actually, you know what? Tell me in the comments below. I, I think some of you have probably figured it out already. But a new Superman must be introduced, Warner Brothers says behind the scenes. So ta Coates was brought in to make a black Superman to write a script. And another promise was made. Jeff is still there. Get rid of him and you can be the new Superman. Reggie Jean Paul was promised the role if the Snyder verse was, re was restored. So, would he be Valzad? Yes. That's how he was coaxed into coming out with these accusations, right? That's why all of a sudden, something that was not racist years ago now is ridiculous. That's the third person that's, this man has used, Ray Fisher. Grace Randolph with leaking fake information and now uh, Reggie Jean Page. And because these Snyder bronies keep everyone quiet, no one's willing to speak out. I even stopped talking about it on this channel when they threatened me with my IP address and wish my hushy dead. But yeah, not anymore. It's clear who is the puppet. And it's clear now at this point who's the puppet master. But again... I'm going to reiterate this one more time. Take it with a grain of salt. I want to be clear that these are simple hmm, information that I have been leaked. We'll just say that. Anyways, let me know, of course, what you guys think about all of this. Let me know in the comments below. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.